we have learned how limit is defined formally. I just have seen how we can apply this to a few easy examples. But what happens if we try this with an example which is slightly more complicated? Well, let's try. We take the function fx equals x squared, f from r to r, and we wonder what happens if x approaches 2. So we want to determine a uh, limit from f of x, x approaching 2, and we call this limit L. So that means that we want, given any epsilon bigger than 0, we want to find a delta such that fx is closer to L than epsilon whenever x is close enough to delta. Okay, there we go. Well, first of all, we have to guess what the limit, limit will be if x approaches 2. And do that graphically, for example, and guess that it li this limit will probably be 4, 2 squared 4. So we guess L equals 4. And then we have to estimate, as always, fx minus L. We have to get that value small. Well, we know f of x, x squared, L, 4, and we can uh, split it, x squared minus 4 equals x minus 2 times x plus 2, like this. And the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values, so product x minus 2, x plus 2. And then we see, well, x um, it will be probably be chosen close to 2, so this x minus 2 well, is going to be our small quantity. But we also have to take care of this x plus 2 over there. First of all, I say, well, we choose de our delta, we choose it at most equal to 1. That's the first condition. And why is that? That's in order to take care of this second factor here. Because if um, uh, delta is smaller uh, or equal than 1, that means uh, x minus 2, that one, uh, uh, is uh, smaller equal than 1. So our x minus 2 is smaller equal delta, so x minus 2 absolute value is smaller equal than 1, which means that our x is between 1 and 3, which means that if we add 2 to both sides, we get 3 smaller equal than x plus 2 smaller equal 5. So that means that x plus 2 absolute value is smaller equal than 5. So now we have estimated the second part. It won't be something small, but we have to estimate it to make sure it stays uh, bounded and we have to know what the bound is. So we know our fx minus l is smaller or equal than x minus 2 absolute value, x plus 2 absolute value, and x plus 2 absolute value is at most 5 times absolute value of x minus 2, and absolute value of x minus 2 will be smaller than uh, delta. So we get fx minus l smaller or equal than uh, 5 times delta if we choose delta. Uh, less than 1. So, how are we going to choose our epsilon? We, uh, we choose our delta such that uh, delta is the minimum of epsilon over 5 and 1. So it means that the, this condition over here is satisfied because we choose our delta as the minimum of those two. So suppose someone gives you an epsilon of 10, then 10 over 5 equals 2. So then the minimum of 2 and 1 equals 1, and we choose our delta to be 1. And if someone gives you an epsilon of, say, 0 0.5, then we choose the minimum of those two here, 0 0.5 over 5 equals 0 0.1 and 1, then we choose our delta to be 0 0.1. So uh, we know for sure that uh, if we choose uh, our delta like this, that our delta will be less or equal than 1, so this condition over there will be satisfied. And why this? Well, we had our fx minus l was smaller than 5 delta. Delta is the minimum of epsilon over 5 and 1, so delta is smaller than or equal to epsilon over 5. So 5 times delta is smaller than epsilon. So if we choose our delta like this, then our fx minus l will be smaller than epsilon for an arbitrary epsilon, which means that our limit uh, equals l which, have, uh, which we took as l equals 4, so limit for x to 2, x squared equals 4. So you see that 
even with a function which is not so hard, a function f x equals x squared, you have to do still some effort to formally prove that the limit equals what you think it is, that the limit x to 2 equals 4. So again, this type of uh, exercise is required for practice. So uh, uh, practice with this type of problems, and at a certain point you will get the hang of it.